this tutorial I will be looking at this reference image there are links in the description below as to how to obtain this image I will also be referring back to some of the swatches that I produced in part one of this series so if you would like to go back and look at that I would strongly suggest you look at that before you start moving on to the drawing of the portrait and trying to build up tones it would be really useful for you to have your own swatches especially if you are using paints that aren't the Winsor and Newton paints so it would be useful to you, for you to have your own swatches to refer back to. So let's move on with the tutorial. For your initial sketch you can choose to use a light box, sketch freehand or the grid method. Now I'm choosing to use the grid method today because I would like to get as much detail as possible although we're using watercolour and we don't want too much detail I want it to be as perfect as possible. I'm also using Arches watercolour paper which I'm taping down when I start painting because I will be using obviously a variety of different water techniques and one of them will be wet on wet and if I don't tape the paper down and if I don't have at least 200 GSM then the water, the paper will buckle. Um, under the pressure of the water so I would recommend getting a good quality watercolour paper at least 200 GSM I'm using Archer's 300 GSM cold pressed because I like the texture um, and you will find that when you are going through and adding all of the layers you will notice the, di the difference in the texture and there's the image that I have finished with not too much detail Before we start painting there's a few things we need to consider. We need to look at our image and start to plan out our lighter and darker areas. You can even sketch around those highlights to make sure you know where they are. You should also think about the paints that you are using. We are using Winsor & Newton Cotman half pan 45 pan set. These come in smaller sets also, but you can use whatever watercolours, obviously the brands that you have. And I'm using a variety of brushes, including silver, black velvet brushes, because they create a smooth effect. I have started by adding water onto the background because I'm going to be applying the wet on wet technique because I want to create a smooth effect. I'm, however, adding water around the portrait because I don't want to add to the portrait just yet and then I am applying a layer of clean water to the face so that I can add skin tones and some of these skin tones are different from the skin tones I started in the first demonstration so the first skin tone that I'm going to layer up it's very pinky mix and it's Indian red and alizarin crimson it's very watered down and you'll see that Initially, it was quite dark, but then once it's soaked into the paper, it's become quite light. And you should notice that when these colours dry, they become much lighter. So now this is a darker mix of burnt sienna, mauve and Payne's grey highlight the dark areas. I have just, before I added this layer, added some water to the paper just to wet it a little because if I added it on dry I would get some distinct lines and I want the watercolour to blend into the rest of the image. So if you want to blend your marks you should just add a little bit of water to the dry layer before you start applying your paint. The next colour on the top of the forehead is Burnt Sienna, Mauve and Ultramarine. Again it's very watered down to create that bluey effect. And then I'm picking, going to pick out some details with some Van Dyke Brown and a mixture of Burnt Sienna, Mauve and a tiny bit of Payne's Grey just to make it a little bit darker. And I'm going to leave that highlight area just under the chin. Again, picking up some areas with Van Dyke Brown. And a little bit of paint spray in the nostril, but if it's too dark, then obviously you can take that away with some tissue. So I'm now going to pick up some darker tones. 
with a mix of burnt sienna, mauve and a tiny bit of Payne's Grey just to make it a tiny bit darker. And initially it looks quite dark but when it dries it will tone down and it will get lighter. The eyes have been picked out with yellow ochre and burnt umber and a tiny bit of cadmium red. They will be touched up later with um, watercolour pencil and toned down. And that's some ultramarine blue there. Again watered down. So there's been a bit of a jump there because the camera turned off and um, I've added burnt sienna and as this stands it does look quite intense however once it has the layers on top of Van Dyke brown it will look much more like the hair that the model has in front of us. So now I'm going to start adding dark areas with Van Dyke Brown and these should represent the areas on the model but there will be darker and lighter areas which I will tidy up later with watercolour pencil. So now I'm going to add some final finishing touches around the eyes, nose, mouth and hair with some really sharp watercolour pencils. with my white gel pen just to see if there's any final finishing touches that I can add. 
So here is the finished portrait. It's a little bit more detailed than I intended, but there it goes. If you found this tutorial useful, make sure you check out the watercolour playlist. And don't forget, if you haven't already seen the first part of this portraits series on how to mix skin tones, then also check that out before you start painting your portrait. Don't forget that the links to all resources used in today's tutorial are in the descriptions below. And if you would like to see more content like this in the future, make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified of future content.